In this video, I've got no idea what I'm going to photograph. I've finally run out of inspiration and ideas for my macro photography. What do you do when that happens? Let's find out together. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks and don't worry, I've not actually run out of ideas for new videos for uh, new macro photography subjects. I've got plenty of things that I still want to photograph. And if you really want to uh, stick around and see more macro photography ideas and inspiration, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Go and do that before we get started. If you are here right now looking for new macro photography ideas and inspiration for new subjects or for new techniques, uh, I'm going to give you a few uh, ways of finding those new ideas, finding new inspiration and getting motivated for taking some new photographs and exploring your own photographic techniques. There's a few ways that I do this myself and I'm simply going to explain them a little bit to you and hopefully you can implement those same methodologies and ideas uh, to improve your own idea finding methods. I'm going to uh, jump right in with my very first method, which is simply to go exploring. If your home is anything like mine, you probably have a few knickknacks and ornaments lying around your house. Mine don't get uh, enough attention. I put a lot of things out on my shelves. Anybody that's been watching my videos for a while knows that they uh, change every now and again, but not all that often because everything here is uh, very static. It's actually quite dusty, uh, but I don't pay too much attention to each individual item. This is something that you can do uh, just to not only go around your house and start enjoying some of your ornaments, uh, maybe throw a couple of old ones out if you've uh, not looked at them in a while and come back to them and think, maybe that's not for me anymore. Um, but you can go around with your camera as well and re-examine all of the different items that you once purchased or were given uh, for a specific purpose and really take a close look at them. Some of the things in my house uh, came in on uh, one day, I admired them, uh, put them up on a shelf, and then I've never looked at them again. So I like to uh, grab my camera and just go exploring in my own home, looking at my own possessions, my own ornaments, and re-discovering uh, the interesting facets that they all have. Lots of different textures, lots of interesting colours and patterns, and you can really uh, start to delve deep into all of these different items if you just take a closer look. I've got my Adapter Look Studio attached to the hot shoe of my camera. I've got a couple of lighting arms attached here, uh, a couple of colour filters and uh, a different coloured arm here as well. I'm going to uh, go and explore my bookcase, take a bit of a closer look at some of the books, some of the items, and really try and find those interesting little close-up details that you wouldn't see at a passing glance. After only a couple of minutes looking around and re-exploring all of my objects and items of interest on my shelves, as well as uh, finding a little bit more dust than I would like, I found a really interesting subject that I'd completely forgotten that existed. This is one of those little pin toys that uh, you can push pins through on the back side of and it will create interesting patterns on the front. Uh, my wife has actually left an imprint of her face in here and without me even touching it, it makes for a really interesting little subject. It's in fact one that I'm going to come back to at a later date because I think there's a lot more that I can do with it. For now, I'm going to take a couple of shots with a couple of colour filters and just see what I can get without playing around with it too much. Maybe just move it around on the shelf, uh, get some pictures and then move on, keep exploring.
Now that I've had a look around my house, had a little bit of an explore and uh, rediscovered some of the uh, weird and wonderful items that we've collected over the years, I think it's time to focus down on a single item. And that in itself requires a little bit more inspiration. It's all well and good saying I would like to photograph this object, uh, but how to photograph it and what kind of images you want out of your uh, shoot is still a mystery. I'm going to go and grab a random item that I've never shot before and uh, see if I can't expand on uh, my initial ideas for it with a little bit more experimentation. I've come through into my kitchen because this is the type of place that you're going to find a lot of those interesting items that are worth a deeper uh, exploration into what kind of techniques you can use and what kind of uh, images you can come out with. The fridge in particular is a really great spot to start because there's lots of different types of food, there's lots of colours, there's lots of packaging and bottles. I'm going to uh, see what I can uh, get out of this little bottle of Heineken here. It's nice and cold, it's come straight out of the fridge, so there's lots of condensation on it and it's got this lovely green colour. It's also transparent, uh, a little bit reflective because of the glass. There's lots of challenging things to uh, really push our skills, our ideas and our techniques to the limit with something as simple as a bottle. It's not something that you would usually think about as a prime macro photography subject, uh, but it's certainly worth exploring even the bubbles around the neck, uh, the uh, beads of water on the outside of the glass, uh, the labels themselves, the colour of the glass, everything can be a really interesting uh, aspect to focus down on. I'm not actually drinking the beer, I've got a nice cup of tea here, which is equally important for finding your inspiration. Make yourself a nice hot drink, sit down and have a look at your subject. It's also worth thinking about uh, what kind of technique you want to approach something with. You might be thinking, I want to try out a particular type of lighting and uh, then go out and find the subject that suits the technique. I want to try lighting this bottle from behind, shining some light through it. So it's a perfect uh, example of a subject that's going to really suit that type of technique. Uh, I also want to try adding a little bit of uh, water to something. So again, it's going to be really great. The bottle is straight out of the fridge, so it's condensing a little bit. But using a little spray bottle of my own is a really great idea to uh, add a few extra little beads of water to uh, simulate more condensation, even if it's just speeding up that natural process of uh, the atmosphere beading down onto the cold bottle. I'm going to set up a little bit of lighting uh, and see if I can't get an interesting shot out of my bottle. Our little video that we put out last week, Guess the Subject, it features this bottle as the first answer. So there's a little tip. If you head over there, uh, you'll be able to get that first uh, macro photography subject for free. I've uh, had quite a lot of fun playing around with the beads of water on this bottle, shining the light through it, create some really nice effects. And that has given me a few more ideas for perhaps other glass objects that I might want to photograph. So you've had a walk around your house, you've focused down on a specific subject, maybe learnt a new technique. What's next? Where can we go from here to expand our idea range and inspirational thinking? If you've done a shoot with a specific object, maybe learnt a new technique, then you can go and apply that technique to similar objects. Do another lap of your house and for the example of our bottle, maybe you have other glass objects that would benefit from a little spray of water on them to add a little bit more interest. Maybe you have other transparent items that have similar characteristics but are uh, equally interesting to photograph and might produce some different results. So take another lap around your house and uh, see if you have any new ideas simply from trying something else out on a specific subject. Now, not everybody's going to be at that point. You're not going to just uh, keep going around your house and finding new ideas every single time, um, but you might find things that you uh, are sort of half baking in your mind as you go around. 
I do this quite a lot. I have uh, boxes, I call it my subject box, uh, and I put interesting things in here that I might want to photograph in the future, or things that I've uh, tried out and might want to take a deeper look at uh, later on. I have all sorts of things in here, some of which you will recognize. I've got a couple of pocket watches, uh, which I did a tutorial on. I've got my little a uh, piece of potpourri which I really like to photograph um, and it comes out with some interesting results. There's things in here that I've never photographed as well. I have this big piece of uh, stone, I think it's uh, I think it's jet that we uh, that we picked up which is um, it's very shiny, it's very uh, jagged in places not quite sure what to do with it yet, so it goes in the box. Maybe I'll start shooting some more minerals again, and then I'll think, I've got that piece of jet that I want to try and photograph. Uh, if you start collecting these things, you will eventually find a use for them. If you don't, don't worry about it. They can just sit in here uh, perpetually until you do think of something, or uh, maybe you never will, and they can just get thrown out again if you've got uh, an abundance of things like feathers or, or dried flowers. Maybe they'll never get used, maybe they will. It's a resource that you guys can use and come back to just to expand on your ideas and revisit if you need a little bit of uh, extra inspiration. So far we have three really great words that you guys can use for inspiration when you get stuck. Write them down and come back to them uh, to think about how you want to find your next idea. Explore, walk around your house, find uh, items that you might have missed and overlooked in the past. Experiment, take those items and really take a deep dive into them. Find new techniques and ideas that you might want to expand upon. Collect, if you can recognize items that might make an interesting subject in the future and are maybe not quite there when it comes to uh, a full idea, put them in a box. And the same goes for techniques. Write down any techniques that you might want to try. And then when inspiration does strike, you have a wealth of resources there to try out. I do have one last word for you, and that is research. This is probably the most common thing that people turn to when they're trying to find inspiration. It's the reason that we're here, is to give you guys lots of inspiration and ideas. I'm trying things all of the time and uh, showing them to you guys with the hope that you guys can then take them and expand upon those ideas and techniques even further to create your own unique artworks and photographs. Inspiration is never born from a vacuum. People don't just sit in the dark and think up unique and interesting ideas on their own. Everything comes from our environment, from other people, from our experiences. And you can take those and think about things that you might want to try out with your own photography. That maybe sounds a little bit pretentious, but there is a practical aspect to it. And that is simply go online and look at what other people are doing. I'm not saying go and copy other people, try and uh, expand and add your own style, your own twist and your own creativity to these techniques and ideas and subjects that are out there, but there are plenty of people doing those things. Uh, right here on YouTube, there's plenty of YouTubers, so if you've exhausted all of the videos on our channel, go and check out some other photographers. There's uh, Flickr, there's Google Images, there's uh, even Pinterest, 500 pics, uh, even Facebook, there's plenty of photographers showing off their work. Uh, don't be afraid to engage with those people. Ask them how they're coming up with ideas, how they're creating the images that they're creating. I think you'll find that most photographers are more than happy to talk about their work. Hopefully that has given you a little bit of a kickstart in finding some new inspiration for your own work, for your own photography, and uh, especially as we're going into winter and uh, a lot of us are going to be stuck at home, uh, it'll give you a little bit of uh, inspiration on what to try out next. If you want more macro photography ideas, inspiration, and uh, chatty videos like this one, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button. There's a lot more to come. Um, I know I said I was out of inspiration, but these techniques really do work. So hit the subscribe button and you won't miss any future videos. If you enjoyed this one, give it a like to let me know that you like this type of content. And if you've got any comments for me, if you have different ways of finding inspiration, or if you have any ideas that you'd like me to try out, put them down in the comment section. 
For now though guys, that's all that I've got time for. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.